Hi everybody and welcome back to NAC 3D Designs. Now ever since I posted the video of the CR30 print time lapse I've had lots of requests asking what it looks like to slice files for on a belt printer. So I'm going to pull up Black Belt Cure and I'm going to show you a few of the profiles I've built for it that I'm working on for my White Knight, my Squire, and I've also built a profile for the CR30. Uh, at this point I do not know if Creality is going to use Black Belt Cura or if they're going to incorporate belt slicing into their new uh, slicing software that they've been releasing. But um, I'm going to show you what I've got here and give you guys an idea of what it looks like to slice on a 45 degree angle. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we will need to do is go out to blackbelt-3d.com, their software section, and we're going to go ahead and download Black Belt Cura 3.6 as well as the 3.6.0 update 1 and install them on your computer. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and open up Black Belt Cura 3.6.1. Now you notice my splash screen is going to look a little different from yours. I've gone ahead and changed out for the white knight instead of the black belt and put my logo on it because, well, I'm working on an installer file that will install profiles for the Squire and the white knight for anybody that builds my printers. I'm hoping to get that uploaded on the uh, GitHub here soon. Once I've got a little bit more testing done on it, make sure the profiles I've built work. Um, stay tuned for that if you're a, a white knight or a Squire builder. Alright, and here we've got our basic view. I've got my White Knight profile loaded. Now the nice thing is with Cura, once you figure out how to do it, you can load STL files of your printer and give yourself this nice little outline. So now you see exactly what the print will look like on the belt. I've made one up for the White Knight. I've also got one for the Squire. Today let's go ahead and work in the CR30 platform since that seems to be the big news right now. And here you have your basic platform that looks like the CR30 printer minus the control box. So let's go ahead and load up a model. Go ahead and pull up the Benchy for now. I'll go ahead and rotate it. I'm going to just go ahead and slice it up real quick. And we'll do a layer view so you can all see what it looks like. Slice it at a 45. Now, the Benji was designed to be printed on a standard printer from the bottom up where you shouldn't need any supports. The only problem with slicing on a 45 is occasionally you will get layers that, well, there's nothing underneath it when it goes to print. You're going to see one of those here in just a second at the top of the roof line, right about here. And you see it right there. Because the way it's designed, nothing has actually printed before it gets there. Which, if you notice during the one print, you'll see that one loose strand of filament when it prints the roof. That's why it does this one pass right here before the rest of the build catches up with it. You could fix that by putting supports right across the back or possibly orienting the, the file at a different angle. And now the reason the Benchy doesn't come out as well, if you look when we go down across here, it's drawing the jagged edge right across this back a little bit. Unfortunately, with nothing behind it to stop it, occasionally you will get where it extrudes out past the top it's so being a nice smooth back edge I'm sorry yeah right here you see how it's trying to draw each letter with nothing below it it tends to just squirt out past the top edge when it does that something again could be fixed by changing the angle of the print Let's go back to solid view. Turn around, let's look at the back side here where it says Benchy. Now if you wanted to try and support this a little bit, 
you could select the Benchy. Come here to custom supports. Put a support right there. Now from experience I know if I make the Z eight and let's put the X at 14. Center it because the Benchy is centered. Put it down on the ground. That's going to cover all of where it says Benchy. That'll help it look a little bit better depending on what, how much of an interface layer you do and such. It also makes nice for when you go to print these. Let's move it in a little bit. If you want to print a bunch of these and you want to be sure that you don't have that very first line not draw well due to the retraction and possible under extrusion, I like to put just a small piece of support right before each piece. This way, the only thing that gets ruined is, your support, is the support, not the model. So now we can go ahead and let's say we want to print five copies. Now we've got our five copies, we just need to position them all. Now we know this one, we'll go ahead and put it at zero. Now I like to keep about 50 millimeters between them, but that's not always going to be what this is. Obviously we're already sitting 66 back, so we're going to put that at 100, sorry, minus 100. It'll give us a good distance and hopefully it doesn't start printing one before it finishes printing the next one. We'll check that in a little bit here. Let's see what they look like now. Let me go ahead and slice that. Now up here on the right, you'll see where it says copies. Unfortunately, the only way this function works at present is if you actually use the black belt printer's profile and then change it to suit your printer. Uh, for whatever reason, with their custom belt printer profile that I built the CR30s and the White Knight and the Squires off of, that option does not seem to work. I've put a trouble ticket in with Black Belt to see if they can fix this. I haven't gotten a response back that it's been fixed, but they're looking into the issue. So now we want to make sure that we're so that we're not retracting, moving to this model, and then going back to this model. I want, we want to make sure we've got enough space between these so it finishes one before it starts the next. We'll go to layer view. Now we'll just scroll down through the layers and see if, and that's going really slow. And we're good. As you can see, it doesn't start into the next one for a few layers. And now we're into the next one. I'm putting 100 between each one seems to be good. We're not starting one before we finish the next. And that would print us six benchies. I say you want to print something bigger. Let's get rid of all these. So we just move this so it's in the print area. Doesn't really. You could drop it here, or you could drop it all the way up here. It's still when it slices, it's still going to start right at the beginning. Put it like this. Now I've learned trying to start with the tip of a sword at the beginning of print really doesn't work. The broader area you can get to start, the better. So I'm going to go ahead and spin this around so it starts at the handle. And if you don't have a choice and both ends are really pointed, again you could just drop a little bit of support right at the front. That would also fix the problem. And we'll look at it layer view again. And that's with 5% infill. I 
Main thing to remember when you're lining things up on the belt, the part that's furthest in on the belt is what is going to print first, not what's up here at the front. That's basically what it looks like as it prints on a belt printer. Hope this answered a few questions. And uh, can't wait till everybody can get their own belt printer. Hopefully, Creality gets their uh, CR30 model into production here in the, in the very near future. And uh, I'll see you guys in some of my future videos. Thanks for tuning in.